Here at Railroads, it's important to us that we begin all of our presentations with an acknowledgement of the lands our university is located upon. So Railroads University acknowledges that our campus rests upon the traditional lands of the Kosepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. There has been a long, long history of teaching, learning, gathering on these lands. And it's with great gratitude that we live, learn, work, and play on the traditional lands of the Kosepsum and Lekwungen ancestors and families. We have quite a crew uh, here today to talk about all things humanitarian studies here at Roll Roads. So on the left side, we have our names of our program heads. So Dr. Michael Young, who is the director of the School of Humanitarian Studies, as well as the program head for our Master of Arts in Justice Studies. Dr. Kenneth Christie, program head for our Master of Arts in or Human Security and Peace Building. Dr. Marnie Jill, Program Head of our Master of Arts in Conflict Analysis and Management, and Dr. Jean Slick, Program Head of our Master of Arts in Disaster Emergency Management. And these wonderful folks helped us find some even more wonderful folks. So on the right side, here are some names of our wonderful alumni and current students who we're gonna be chatting with in a few slides. So we have Rebecca Fairchild, an alumni of our Master of Arts in Justice Studies. Aaron Oldman, an alumni of our Master of Arts in Human Security and Peace Building. Jeff Green, who is a current student of our Master of Arts in Conflict Analysis and Management. And Megan McKenzie, an alumni of our Master of Arts in Disaster and Emergency Management. So a big, big welcome to all of you. Uh, we have so many questions to explore with you today, so I'm going to quickly flip through the next few slides so we can get to the exciting part of the session, and that's talking to all of you. So you've learned a little, little bit about who we are. Oh, and my name is Selena Kunar. I'm an education advisor here at Railroads University, and I'm going to help moderate today's discussion. We would love to learn who all of you are. So. If you feel comfortable, let's take the chat box for a spin. Looking back down at that black bar, if you click the chat box icon, it should appear. Let us know, where are you joining us from today? What are you hoping to learn from today's session? What sector are you working in? All of this information will help us understand who we're talking to and make sure that the information we provide today is helpful to everyone who joined in live. That said, the session will be recorded as well, and we'll send out a recording in the next day or so. So for those of you who are live, feel free to sit back, relax, and enjoy the conversation with all of us today. And for those who are watching the recording, a big thank you as well. Once we get to know everyone in the room today, we're going to do a quick spin of the programs we have here at the graduate level in our School of Humanitarian Studies. So that's where we're going to hear from some of our program heads. Then we're gonna head into a conversation with our students. We had some wonderful questions submitted from everyone who registered today. So um, get excited. And that said, if you didn't ask a question when you registered, that is a-okay. The chat box is with us all day long. So feel free to pop any questions or comments that come up for you in the chat box as we move through our discussion. And with that, of course, we'll cap off with a questions and conversations time permitting. So we'll be sure to reflect to that chat box then as well. So all this talk about the chat box, let me open it up and let's see who is joining us today. So we have folks from Alberta, BC, Ontario, oh, the UK. and a variety of backgrounds as well. Very, very cool. So we have folks who are joining us from military, folks who are interested in a career change. Walter, who is in emergency management, nuclear science. We have the Department of Justice, Correction Services Canada, and of course, Emergency Management Ontario as well. Well, thank you all so much for joining us. And I'm noticing a theme and what folks are hoping to learn about today. And it's, it's our programs. How will you know which one's for you? Well, that's exactly what our discussion is gonna be all about. So let's get started. 
here we have a quick sneak peek of all of the different programs we offer here at Royal Roads within our School of Humanitarian Studies. All of these little boxes, so you should see a variety of our programs of Masters of Arts. We also have graduate diplomas as well. And then not listed on the slides, we also have a brand new graduate certificate as well is a well-loved Bachelor of Arts in Justice Studies as well. So I'll note here, uh, there's a little bit of a difference when we say Master of Arts or Graduate Diploma, but they are really one in the same. So generally our Master of Arts will be a two-year program and the Graduate Diploma is the first year of that program. So we get that question a lot. What's the difference between the Graduate Diploma in Justice Studies or the Master of Arts in Justice Studies? Well, there you go. The learning is much the same, and it's kind of a way to, to build to that full two-year program. So with that, let's get started in talking about the programs themselves. So we'll kick off with the Conflict Analysis and Management Program here at Royal Roads. So we have this both in the Master of Arts two-year and Graduate Diploma one year. So this program focuses on both theory and understanding of effect of conflict. We aim to provide you with skills to work with conflict and help you create self-awareness of what your role is within that system of conflict and where you can have impact to make a difference. You'll be introduced to a wide range of skills. So things like facilitation, negotiation, mediation, and many others as well. And you'll learn to appreciate the strengths and limitations of all of those too. So that's a quick sneak peek of what our conflict analysis management program is and what you can expect to explore within that program. Next, we have disaster emergency management. So Jean, I see we have you on the webinar today. Did you wanna just give us a quick sneak peek as to what is DEM here at Royal Roads? Sure, um, thank you, uh, excuse me. <clears throat> our master, oh, excuse me, I've just gotta clear my... Our Master of Arts in Disaster and Emergency Management program is, is two years. We also have the one-year diploma, as Selena has mentioned. Um, I, the first thing I would say is we take an approach that disasters are not natural. Uh, there's a no natural disaster campaign out right now. So we really look at disasters as being a product of the interaction of hazards with uh, social systems, political systems, the environment. And so we take a systems perspective and we also take a holistic perspective in the program of looking across sort of the life cycles. So we look at prevention, preparedness, mitigation, as well as response and recovery to disasters. So this broader systems perspective and then the whole spectrum of what is included in disaster and emergency management. Thanks, Jean. Now we're gonna talk a little about human security and peace building. So we're gonna pass the mic over to you, Ken. Hi, thanks, Selena. And thanks again for organizing these, uh, these webinars, really fantastic job. So in human security and peace building, we also have a, a one year graduate diploma and we have a two year master's degree. And it's basically an interdisciplinary graduate program. So we have lots of disciplines represented in it that intersect with each other, such as political science, history, sociology, uh, psychology, et cetera. And basically we're looking at trying to create leaders in leadership in humanitarian assistance, in social reconstruction, in conflict management, and looking at peace building in terms of international context. So we do have quite a bit of uh, international content within our program. But we also have lots of students who uh, work in Canada, of course, uh, dealing with human security, dealing with vulnerable populations, etc. So we are, we are also trying to take a holistic view of peace building and development, which are broad concepts and they emphasize social transformation. Hopefully, uh, you know, much of the work that we do leads to sustainable peace and uh, social and economic development. So it, it's, it's a very broad in general, but we have students working in very specific areas. Thank you. Awesome, Ken, thank you so much. And we'll cap off with our final graduate program here within the School of Humanitarian Studies. 
our MA and Graduate Diploma in Justice Studies. So over to you, Michael. Well, thank you, Selena, and your team, and my colleagues for being here, and especially thank you for our alumni and current students, and not least, uh, of course, for the people that are watching us. So as, as this slide shows, we're, we're founded, this program's founded on a trans, transdisciplinary approach to justice studies, which focuses on solving complex social issues, or what we are now calling, uh, has become a common term for called wicked problems, those things that don't ever seem to go away no matter what we do in terms of, of research and, and policy formation and even, even programs. So um, just as a way to recap really what we're about, um, we expand the scope of justice studies um, to a variety of sectors beyond what we'll call criminal justice. And so that includes a social justice kind of focus, but uh, police courts and corrections are sort of the starting point, but we go in and we work with the, uh, the topic areas of nonprofit organizations, health, social welfare, um, marginalized groups, and, and, and many more. Generally, the degree itself is builds on interdisciplinary studies and is by being transdisciplinary, that's the problem focused element to, to what the degree is all about. Uh, importantly there is a, it's, it's also a holistic approach to the, the studies of justice. And generally um, there's an emphasis on collaborative and problem focused um, methods and, and programming. Um, and this is an approach that's become highlighted many years ago, uh, it hasn't been acted on uh, by the U United Nations. The, uh, the, the degree is attractive to people um, in all areas of anything related to what we'll call justice. So um, people in uh, health and public administration, uh, graduates of the program occupy positions that are essential for what we'll call the just and safe society. Um, it includes addressing issues, for example, faced by Aboriginal people, other marginalized groups, um, and includes curriculum on um, indigenous ways of knowing, and uh, certainly uh, based on the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Commission, we, we speak to that issue, those, the issues emerging from that as well. So we also have a diploma and, um, and degree option for interested students. And one way that I can sort of capture what we're doing, when you arrive in the program, you're motivated to make a difference, you want to contribute, um, and to take on the challenges related to justice. Um, generally, you have a social science background, some per personal and professional experience. You have openness to learning. After the degree, we, uh, we anticipate reflective practitioners with a good theoretical foundation and applied skills for engaging in justice. That includes analyzing the problems, uh, looking at the intersections of justice within certain sectors of society, um, and so forth. Yeah, that's. It's good for now, I think I can keep going, but. <laughs> Thanks, Michael. Yes, our, this really is just a quick, quick, quick snapshot of these programs. We have some wonderful webinars we've done recently um, that dive into each of these programs more thoroughly with all of our program heads. So if you're interested in learning more and some other information, you know, like upcoming dates, program schedules, courses, feel free to connect with our offices and we can send you a link to those recordings and let you know when the next webinars are coming up for those as well. So now that we've heard a little bit about our programs, let's hear a lot from people who lived the experience. So we're gonna kick off with learning about Jeff Green. So Jeff has spent the majority of his working career within the field of justice as a frontline peace officer embracing the gratification that comes with helping those who may be encountering the most difficult times in their lives. His experience is divided between serving as a police officer, deputy chief officer, correctional officer, and correctional officer with over 10 years of working and residing in Northern isolated communities. His educational journey began, began at Holland College where he earned a certificate in their justice preparatory program. Shortly after he joined to Holland College and graduated from their Atlantic Police Academy's Police Science Cadet Program. Due to his passion towards helping the profession, he elected to attend Royal Roads University's Bachelor of Arts in Justice Studies in 2017 to develop 
to further develop his knowledge and better serve his professional goals. He is now a current and returning RRU student working towards a Master of Arts in Conflict Analysis and Management, where he wishes to further develop his capacity towards effectively handling and transforming conflict within his workplace. Well, a big, big welcome to you, Jeff. Um, we're gonna kick off our question period by hearing from you first. So thank you so much for being here and let's take a spin and learning about Megan. So Megan, Megan is a retired Lieutenant Commander Born in Calgary, Alberta, raised in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Megan enrolled in the Naval Reserves in 1993 as a boatswain before pursuing her commission as a maritime surface and subsurface Mars officer, after which she served as a deck officer for HMCS Glace Bay. Megan transferred to the regular force in October 2000 as a bioscience officer within the Canadian Forces Health Services Branch. Upon her retirement from the Canadian Armed Forces in January 2021, Megan was the medical intelligence team lead, having served over eight combined years as an analyst. Her experience in CBRN and medical intelligence is highly regarded as she regularly instructed on several courses to a wide variety of audiences. Megan holds a Bachelor of Science degree in microbiology from the University of Saskatchewan, a Master of Public Health from the Uniform Services University of the Health Sciences, and a Master of Arts in Disaster and Emergency Management from Royal Roads University, 2014. Megan retired to Cochrane, Alberta with her husband, Doug, and together they provide counseling and professional services in emergency and risk management, operational planning, medical and intelligence and CBRN expertise. A big, big welcome to you, Megan, and thank you for joining us today. Next, we're gonna dive into learning more about Erin. So I will pass it over to Ken. Hi, can you hear me? Just having some technical. Oh, coming uh, through clear. There we go this year. Okay, great. So Aaron uh, is, I think, one of the most amazing students uh, I've ever had the privilege to have in the program. She graduated uh, in the 2020 class in the MA in Human Security and Peace Building. She is uh, from uh, a long way away from down under in Australia, and she works in the mental health and suicide prevention in the construction, mining, and other heavy industries. And what Erin does is amazing is because she connects people uh, thinking of suicide with the help that they need and forms bonds with those people and allows them to, you know, work together and, and work out their problems. And that sort of contribution to better mental health is one of the core areas in, in human security that, that we really uh, think is so important nowadays. So she's working in the workplace and communities. And for those experiencing a lot of hardship for following either a traumatic event, such as conflicts or, or natural disasters. Now, Erin got a, a 4.11 GPA and, and Erin was a flexible admission to the program because she didn't have a lot of previous educational background, which is all the more amazing the amount of work that she put into the program. And the fact that she is the inaugural recipient of the $25,000 Rachel and Ernest Fox Legacy Award in 2020, which tries to support academic success and lessen the financial burden of education. So this, um, this is really a, Aaron's an amazing example of someone who did so well in the program and who really, really worked hard to improve her education and did, you know, to me, uh, one of the best students we've ever had come through the program. Thanks so much, Ken, for telling us more about Aaron. I think that's got us all excited for learning much more from you, Aaron. So I look forward to chatting with you soon. And finally, we have Rebecca 
So I'll turn the microphone over to Michael to tell us a little bit about Rebecca. Yeah, so uh, Rebecca joined RRU in 2015 um, in the BA Justice Studies program. Uh, she started the MA Justice Studies program in 2019, and she chose Royal Rose because she's a, as a working mother and a wife. The, blunt, the blended online residency format best suited her goals, and the limited available she, uh, availability she had to attend a traditional university. Uh, she's been in the military reserves for 15 years as a cadet instructor cadre officer, and her civilian career at Royal Rose is that as a, at a program associate for a BA Justice Studies program. So she's kind of a know-it-all really in terms of the Justice Studies uh, study area in the in the university now and one of the go-to people for us for sure. But she's a pleasure to have in the program and, and certainly a, a great example of, of what can be done um, in, in, the, uh, in the setting that we have. Thank you. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Rebecca. I, I have to echo that whenever there's a question on campus about BA Justice or MA Justice, uh, and we reach out to the program area, it's like, oh, Rebecca will know. <laughs> so, so happy to have you, Rebecca. And we'll dive into um, a lot more about all of what you know right now. <laughs> so with that, let's get into some conversation with these wonderful people. So uh, a theme that came out of our chat box, but was also very, very relevant in the questions people were asking when they registered for today's session was, how did you know this program was gonna be right for you? How did you decide it was a, a good time to be going back to school? So we would love to learn a little bit more about your, your origin stories, if you will. <laughs> so we'll kick off with Jeff. Thanks for the uh, introduction, Selena. I appreciate that. Um, like I was um, alluding a little bit earlier when we were having our pre-discussions, I, I had the, the pleasure of going through the undergrad in justice studies as well. Um, and so I'm a mature student. I returned after about 10 years and it was an amazing experience. Um, I wanted something a little more broad than just criminal um, context. I was looking at some criminal programs, but Royal Road, uh, their justice um, program offered a very wide uh, array. And then that's when I got introduced to conflict. So there's alternative dispute resolution mechanisms ingrained into that program. And I, I uh, connected with that right away because of being a frontline peace officer. So I, I, I connected with that. And sure enough, a couple of years after graduating, I'm, I'm back into conflict analysis now. So that's how my uh, progression came about. Very cool, Jeff. Thank you. And next, why don't we head to, to Megan. Tell us a little bit about how you got introduced to your program and how you knew, you know, it was maybe time to, to start it. Yeah, so I graduated from the program in 2014 and I knew that I was planning my retirement in uh, 2020 from the Canadian Forces. So I was looking for a program that was gonna complement my master's of public health, but also going to support um, my husband and I's business venture moving forward, which is really emergency and risk management. The program at Royal Roads particularly appealed to me not only because of its location, and at that time we were able to have the residency phase, phase which was phenomenal, maybe except for the Peacocks, um, but it really, really dovetailed quite nicely into the Masters of Public Health, uh, in addition to my background with CBRN, um, so chem bio, rad, and nuclear defense. So it, it, it seemed like a really good fit to me, having already done a master's um, full-time while working full-time. The way the program was oriented to the working professional was also very important. Um, trying to do 40 to 60 hours of coursework in addition to my regular workday was not an option for me. And so having the flexibility of the programming at Rural Roads um, tailored so that you can still work and have a life and do schoolwork um, believe me, it is possible, and it was a very enjoyable experience. I found it's been extraordinary, uh, both moving into my last few positions with the Canadian Forces as a team lead for MedInt, um, understanding how to create effective teams, which is a big building block in that emergency management program, was critical, especially when we were working in a reduced workforce scenario um, under pretty high stress uh, conditions knowing how I could maximize my team so that we could all work together uh, was a skill set that I will never forget. So Jean, you, I see you nodding your head there. It was 
that was really, really good. I actually dug into my textbooks a couple of times. So that's me. That's my, my, my origin story for Royal Roads. <laughs> Thanks so much, Megan. Um, why don't we head over to hearing from you, Erin, about your origin story. And I'll, I'll note, as Ken mentioned, Erin's uh, joining us from down under. So it is very, very early on her side of things. <laughs> Thank you for being here today, Erin. <laughs> It is, it is very early. It's uh, 5 a.m. or I'm done about past five an hour in Australia. So I'm happy to be here. Thank you for the invitation and the opportunity to share a little bit of my story with Royal Roads. Uh, so I guess my origin story, um, I was looking for a new challenge. Um, I didn't realize that it was going to be an academic challenge until I bumped into Ken Christie in on an island in Bali, actually. So kind of a serendipitous meeting for me. Um, and I was looking to combine my uh, operational work experience in safety and in volunteering with disaster response. So turns out that um, HSPB combined that beautifully for me. Um, so also the flexible admission, as um, Ken mentioned earlier, I didn't have an education background. So for me, it was really important to have that opportunity and doing the uh, academic writing and critical thinking was absolutely necessary for me. I was very happy to, to be put through those um, that experience before I launched into the master's degree. Um, also the reputation and the caliber of the lecturers and the people that I was likely to be studying alongside uh, was a part of that decision. Um, and very much the ability to choose between uh, or choose from the other the other electives. Um, so from conflict management and um, was was a huge thing for me as well because I did actually choose from those other electives and found that um, really rewarding uh, addition to to the base that I was exploring uh, with HSPB. Um, as uh, as you mentioned, Megan um, or Megan, sorry, in Australia. That's Megan. <laughs> um, the uh, flexibility, uh, the uh, ability to choose from coursework or internship or thesis. Um, and I was tempted by internship and thesis, but I, I uh, ultimately chose the coursework and the short paper and they were the perfect choice for me. So um, one other thing that was uh, really useful to me through the course was the ability to withdraw from a course when I needed to. Um, I had some Ill illness and stress starting to weigh on me at one point and uh, when I felt that the caliber of my work would suffer I actually was able to voluntarily uh, withdraw from a course and do it at the end which was really useful for me as well so let's face it Hatley Castle was pretty fun and as you said Megan the residency was amazing um, so I'll, I'll uh, let you move along. Awesome, Erin. Thank you so much. And we'll cap off with, with hearing from Rebecca. Tell us, oh, you know, we heard that you started with the Bachelor of Arts in Justice Studies, similar to Jeff, but let, let's learn more about how you ended up wanting to pursue the Master of Arts program here as well. Well, my decision really starts with my experience as an undergrad student at Royal Roads. I was a flexible admissions student um, starting my post-secondary academic career in my 30s um, as a single mom at the time. And so what I had to bring to the table for that flexible admission, Royal Roads understood there was value in it. And so being able to partner with an institution that understands what we can give each other meant a lot. And so I, I truly feel that at Royal Roads that I do feel uh, supported, understood, and valued um, by the various uh, pedagogies there. Uh, why I chose the MA Justice Studies, I, I knew that the research that I had started in my applied research project, Jeff knows what I'm talking about, uh, to finish my undergrad wasn't done. And really, I have more questions and I'm not done learning. So I knew I wanted to take that subject into a thesis. I am an example of a student uh, who will not be finishing their thesis on time uh, due to COVID and my uh, familial obligations as the matriarch, uh, which I can get into later if people wish. Uh, but I just, I, I had such a great experience in my undergrad and I knew that it would be an equally wonderful experience in the masters. And so far it, it has been, um, you know, going back to the slide of what the MA Justice Studies program is, 
my big takeaways so far um, is the transdisciplinary research approach and how it is problem focused and therefore informing how the methodology will work and not the other way around. Uh, you know, what is a wicked problem and, and how do we dissect that? And now I've got an understanding of how to do that. Um, and also uh, just how neoliberalism seems to tie into everything, uh, which is certainly with wicked problems and social issues, uh, which I can certainly get into more later. Uh, thank you. Awesome, thank you, Rebecca. It, it's so exciting to hear the origin stories and, and so many common themes that were coming out. As I mentioned earlier, we have uh, webinars specific to each of these programs and we dive a little bit deeper into you know, the things we value here at Railroads. And what's so moving for me is that, you know I'm, I'm, I'm the one usually saying them, but you're the ones who live them and are saying them. And that's really cool that that's coming full circle. So things like you know our scholar practitioners, our faculty, as you mentioned, they're academic experts, but people who are out in the field putting into practice what they bring into our classrooms. So you are living your learning. There's really no theory and then, okay, one day I'll put it into practice. Um, and the flexibility, absolutely. We're so proud of being able to have standard admissions, but flexible admissions as well. And we talk that a little bit about that in these webinars, but what that really means is we take a, a really holistic look at the application process. So we want to know, yes, your academic experience, but your professional experience, your personal experiences, all the things that have come together to make you you, because that's how we ensure that our cohorts, so these, these groups of learners that start the program and move through the end together are so diverse, because it's important to us that the learning, you know, we don't have a, a sage on the stage approach here at Royal Roads. It's the learning comes from your teaching teams, absolutely, but equally so those who are around you. So I'm, I'm really excited that we're able to share all of you because you are those people in the classrooms informing learning that's happening as well. Speaking of in the classrooms, whether that's virtual or on campus, in COVID times, what was the most surprising or meaningful part of your experience in the program? That question came up a lot um, in our registration page as well. So Jeff, I know that's a hefty one, but I'm gonna throw it back to you to, to learn more. Sure, thanks, Lena. Um, I, I think it's the, uh, the, the approach on uh, collaboration and teamwork at Railroads. Um, you're not sitting in an auditorium with 120 people, um, just regurgitating and, and being lectured to and taking notes. Um, there's a lot more to it. There's a big emphasis on collaboration and team di team dynamics within um, all the programs at railroads. Um, from their undergraduate studies to their graduate studies, you have a team coach um, that you have availability to as well, who uh, monitors your your group work. But it it, it just kind of places that uh, realism um, on the, on the workforce. Um, you're not always going to have smooth working groups and you're taking a lens you're, you're reaching outside of your interiority your own lived experiences and you're relying on that of everybody else that you're working with it's not just that one professor for example or the readings it's everybody's dynamics and how they affect the system um so just it's so rich with the team environment and that's that's what really drew me to uh, Royal Roads. i wanted that more intimate setting and that's what Royal Roads offers so that's the biggest, um, I could go on, but that's the biggest um, turning point for me um, to, to choose for all roads over other institutes. Oh, that's awesome, Jeff. Thank you so much for sharing that. You know, especially with many of these programs having a component that's online, there can sometimes be a, a thought that, oh, is, is that correspondence work? Does that mean I'm, I'm isolated on my own? Absolutely not. Here at Rural Roads, even the, the online learning components are interactive and you are always <laughs> elbow steep with your team and those around you. So thank you for sharing that experience. Um, next, why don't we pass it over to Megan? What was the most surprising or meaningful experience uh, for you? I think honestly, having spent my entire career um, being told what to wear where to be, how to act, um, being thrown into an environment where I was with 
folks from the first responder community, there was um, some military, we had some folks from the um, NGOs, learning from their experiences, um, even private industry. So we had some folks uh, in my cohort that represented the oil and gas industry and emergency management and business continuity for them. Um, ha having that shared experience and being able to learn from them was extraordinary because it expanded my aperture of what were the possibilities for me outside of defense, outside of the military. And building that network, I was very nervous to actually start a LinkedIn profile because the online presence was just something that I wasn't prepared to do. And my goodness, it's been extraordinary in terms of connecting me with like-minded folks. Um, everyone here on the call is, is a lifelong learner. Um, and Royal Roads and the way the programming is set up really encourages you to start fueling your appetite to learn more either through connections or the people that you're engaged with, the coursework, the, um, the group work that you're doing. It, it connects you in a way to a community that is global and diverse and everybody just wants to help each other and, and make the world a better place. Um, speaking from a disaster and emergency management front, um, when we dove into the five pillars of emergency management, everybody always focuses on response and recovery. And what I was keenly interested in was the resilience piece. And so is, is resiliency inherent? Is it something that you're born with? Some people are more resilient than others, or can you develop those skill sets as an individual, as a community, as a business? So thinking business continuity management, um, I really, really valued that coming out of the program and it, it was a whole area of knowledge and a shared experience that I hadn't previously experienced in the military. So that was something quite, quite exciting. And I alluded it, to it in my opening remarks. Um, the Myers-Briggs evaluation and the growth, the personal growth that I went through understanding what my strengths and weaknesses were, not only helped me be a better leader, a better spouse, a better partner, understanding where I could do best and then taking the time to actively listen to my teammates, to those around me so that you create those effective teams so that everybody knows that they have a role and a place and an opportunity to thrive and excel. And that's very, very different from traditional military and I would even say traditional academic forums where that sense of community and creating that safe space and allowing you to grow together was really unique and, and I just love it. I've actually, I've mentored at least three different CAF members who've gone through the program since my graduation uh, a number of years ago. So I'm, I'm happy to, I'll just keep talking. So I better stop. <laughs> Thanks Megan, your passion for the, the DEM program. You know, that's the, the, an acronym we use here at Royal Rose for disaster emergency management. Um, oh, it's shining. And I'm, I'm really, connecting with your comments on connection with all of the different people that made up your cohort. Um, when, when the pandemic hit, it was kind of around when we were about to have a webinar for the DEM program. And Jean, I have to say, I was so inspired by one of the first things you had shared was, yeah, well, you know, we're moving fully online and that's awesome. And we're gonna make sure we put a few extra weeks in and these people are gonna be connected and close and that's how we're going to start off the journey. Um, so if you want to learn more about how the DEM program adapted to COVID times, but also has moved into a fully online uh, intake, connect with us and we can send you that recording. But that is so intentional within that program and many others here at Rural Roads too. So thanks for sharing that, Megan. Um, next, Erin. You, uh, I, I really, it was on our, our server here at Rural Roads. There's a, a little story with how you and Ken met and a photo of you guys um, in your meeting space. And I just thought, how cool, oh my gosh. Um, so I'm sure you have many surprising and meaningful parts of your experience, that being one of them perhaps <laughs> on a vacation meeting Ken. But tell us about your experience. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Selena. That was a lot of fun, and it is a great story that both Ken and I um, very much enjoy sharing and telling. So, yeah, that that's the the origin story is a surprising and meaningful one. Um, 
look, Megan covered it so well, and and I agree the passion that um, that came through. I I feel like I just want to reiterate basically everything that that Megan just said, and and she really I can't add too much more to those aspects. One. One of the surprising parts of the course was, as I mentioned earlier, I voluntarily uh, withdrew and, and uh, added a course to the end, which happened to be risk and crisis comms. So it was the risk and crisis communications course, which kicked off at exactly the same time as COVID. So um, studying risk and crisis comms at the very outset of COVID, uh, they, again, talking to the adaptability of the courses, um, Ben Morgan, I think, was the professor, and he just went, all right, well, we were going to study some random stuff, um, but maybe let's study COVID and risk and crisis comms. So that was super interesting to, to go through that process at that time. Um, and again, the, the coursework and the group work that Megan was talking to and the global aspects, um, yeah, reiterate all that stuff. For me, I found the psychological, uh, sorry, psychosocial interventions um, course, it's a, on managing stress, trauma and loss, really, really um, impactful and really extremely helpful in my role. Um, the most meaningful part of the course for me was my two trips to Canada for um, on, residi uh, on residence um, on campus studying. So of course the lecturers, the students, the school, um, the internal environment of the classroom and the external environment at, at, on Victoria Island, it was a, a just unforgettable and incredible. Um, for all of those reasons that Megan um, uh, mentioned there about the caliber of the students and the people that you interact with across so many different um, aspects of life uh, and work and the different experiences that everyone brings and how incredibly helpful people are to, to be supportive of each other. Of course, the Royal Road staff I'm talking about, but also fellow students and lecturers, everybody's just um, incredibly supportive, which is amazing. So it was, uh, you know, one of the best. I've traveled a lot and it was uh, one of my best experiences. So I'll let you move on. Thanks, Selena. Oh, thanks, Erin. And thank you so much for touching on the, the residency experience. You know, for some programs that do have that on-campus component for a few weeks, folks are equally excited at first glance, but equally like, oh, this could be a scheduling challenge. Do I have to get, oh, is it worth it? And after coming to campus, that's when usually the pieces fall in place about, oh yeah, this, this was worth it. This was cool. So I appreciate you sharing your experience now, especially for those folks who are wondering, oh, you know, it's two weeks. Oh. It's really cool to hear the time you had here. <laughs> if I can jump in on that, Selena, if I can travel 14 hours from Australia, you guys can travel across Canada to get there. And it is so worth it. It was it was really incredible. <laughs> you are right, Erin. There is no excuse. <laughs> so with that, let's head over to Rebecca. What was your most surprising or meaningful experience in your program? Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to be brief, but there's two. One was my paradigm shift concerning Indigenous issues. And so in my undergrad, it gives you an opportunity to give you kind of a broad picture, but within the MA Justice Studies program, that's where I've really been able to hone in on a particular issue. And I am a completely different person because of it. Um, so I'll leave that there. And then the second one is I used to rely on my military experience to inform how I would be a student. And now it's the complete opposite. And so, you know, being raised in an organization where your ethics are issued to you, uh, you know, I, I get to learn what my, my ethical beliefs really are and how can I, how can I use that in a positive way to inform and enhance the cadet organization that I work with? Thank you. Oh, wow. Thanks so much, Rebecca. And I, we have so many folks who are interested in all of these programs who come from military backgrounds. So thank you for sharing your experience, um, having both worlds come together at the same time and what that means. For folks who are interested, um, I will mention we do have uh, folks on campus, uh, part of my team, enrollment teams, who are who have their fingertips on the information that's available specific to um, those in the military sector. So if you have any questions about um, funding or how your background applies to our programs, please connect with us and we can always help create that pathway. 
we have our next question here, but that I think we kind of answered through this one. So it was, how has the program impacted your professional personal growth? But realizing we're, we're running short on time, another question that was really prevalent in our registration page was, what would you recommend for someone considering this program right now? Do you have any warning flags? Do you have any words of encouragement, tips or tricks? What would you recommend for people thinking of your program right now? So Jeff, we'll kick off with you again. Thanks, Lena. I, I would just um I would just say jump right into it because if you're like me, I put it off for several years. I mean, and I kick myself a little bit now. Um because it led to other things. I, I jumped into the undergrad and then that led me to the masters. But it took me probably half a decade to get myself. I was thinking about it for that long. And um, I, I, I just, I have, I look back and, and I could have done that a, a lot sooner. Um, because like I said, it opened up doors that I wouldn't expect. Now there's other um, things after this program that I'm already looking at. And uh, you just, you don't know what is going to lead to. And if you do have a passion to follow something, um, you should follow your gut no matter how um, many doubts you have, or if you're doubting it, how difficult it may be. I mean, yes, it's a lot of work, but with a little bit of time and organization, I mean, anyone can can get through it with the dedication. So, I mean, uh, that's what I would suggest. Instead of putting it off, just go into it, and and you won't be you won't regret it. If you're like me, um, the experience has been amazing, and I'm already thinking about future things. So, Royal Road has done that for me all the way through my undergrad to possibly further beyond graduate level. Um, so yeah, that's, that's all I'll say there. So inspiring and motivating. Thanks, Jeff. So Megan, what, what are your words for folks who are thinking about the DEM program? Uh, so for those folks in the military, there's lots of opportunity for sponsorship using your individual learning plan. Um, the Madam program fits right into that complementary area of studies uh, for the Canadian Armed Forces. Uh, if you have any questions about how to apply for the ILP, the language to put into your ILP, as I mentioned previously, I've mentored a few other folks that have actually gone through the Madam program. Um, I think if cost is worrisome, it's worth it. It is 100% worth it, this experience. The ability to connect with others, um, even just through my LinkedIn. So I haven't, I haven't done a resume yet. I don't need a resume. I have my community, I have my network, and I can reach out to my network and get a job that way because it all started at Rural Roads and really pushing me outside my comfort zone to get my LinkedIn profile going. So don't be intimidated. Um, for those of you who are non-military who are coming in without an undergraduate degree, I can tell you I learned more from those in my cohort who had zero post-secondary education than me with all the letters after my name. It's extraordinary how much you learn from each other. So don't be intimidated if you don't have the prior education. And you have, World Worlds has set you up for success. So you have the critical thinking, you have the writing courses that you can do beforehand. Um, as a scientist, I love my words. As an artsman, my goodness, I had to learn how to be judicious. And that writing course really, really helped. So just, I echo what Jeff said, jump right in. Even if you're not ready, the best place to start is at the beginning. And good luck. Oh, I got goosebumps. Thank you, Megan. <laughs> so Erin, over to you. Again, Megan is a tough act to follow. So I read it, read it right, whatever, uh, everything she said, as well as Jeff. And look, just, just dive into it. It's so much fun. Um, of course, you need to be organized, but you'll learn along the way. Any, any, it really, um, brings out those gaps in your uh, in your world and in your abilities, but it's in a supportive environment and, and you have the chance to learn along the way and to apply those things like, I mean, APA, I didn't know it existed before. <laughs> it's, um, and and I, I, I'm literally pretty good at it now. So um, just dive in. It's, it's a little scary. You have to be a little brave and a little bold, but it's so worth it it's an incredible life-changing experience for me a hundred percent and uh, I have no regrets so if you're sitting on the fence uh, right now I'd say um, just jump in and go for it ah oh, Erin thank you you know we have um, one of our taglines uh, is life dot changing and 
that makes us giggle sometimes when we share it with folks because it sounds, you know, oh, a bit markety. But interestingly, it was actually when we polled our alumni, we were like, you know, we really, we really want something that encapsulates your experience with Burl Rose. That's what we want to share. And then that was what came back to us. And we were like, cool, wow. And when we joke sometimes that the the dot, the life dot changing, the dot is that, that residency experience, <laughs> whether it's online or on campus. <laughs> so thanks so much for sharing that. So Rebecca, over to you. I can only second what everyone else has said. And the, the life dot changing is, is true because Royal Roads understands that life dot happens. And when life happens, your, your instructors, your program head, your program office, they are there to throw every solution at you. So you're never alone in this journey. And really, I recommend that you do it because you deserve it. And this is our education and nobody can take that away from you. Thanks. Rebecca, you're so short, sweet and powerful. Oh, thank you. Life dot happens. Oh, thank you. Um, before we cap off today, we have a few more minutes. So I'd actually love to, to open the mic to our program heads. We only heard a little bit from you at the beginning. Um, so maybe, maybe Jean, can I throw it over to you first in case there's anything you want to say before we close today? Uh, no, I'm just going to say thank you to everyone for joining us. It's lovely to have our uh, alumni and current students here. Um, I think they've told the story of what the experience is like, and we could share other, have other alumni who would also share the same kind of passion about their experience. So I do encourage you to think about applying. Um, I, I think what I would say is that there seems to be a bit of a trend during the pandemic that more people are coming back to school. So um, I encourage you. And I would also just say that We've been able to really successfully change from face to face to online. I've just finished teaching two weeks of online residencies and I myself wasn't sure about all of what we could do and they just are amazing. You can actually have a great Zoom classroom and it, while it won't be the same experience that those of you who came face to face for Res had, it is still um, an awesome learning experience. So um, yeah, please consider applying soon. <laughs> Thanks, Jean. And yes, soon we do have some intakes coming up. So I'll be sure to note those dates in the follow up email that'll come out to everyone with the recording. So you have that at your fingertips for future planning. So maybe I'll toss it over to you, Ken. Was there anything you wanted to say before we close out today? Yeah, I just want to say uh, one of the most amazing things about Raw Roads for me is the connections and the networks that the students form, you know, during residency, before residency, after residency, because there's a real bonding process going on between the students that lasts them a lifetime. And, and, and I've seen this over the 10 years that I've actually been at Royal Roads, that people really stay in touch with each other, that they connect, that they form these networks. And you don't get that in too many universities. Uh, and I've worked all over the world in different universities, and I have never seen that kind of, you know, continuity in terms of how people, you know, relate to each other and how they carry on those connections, which is an amazing um, skill and an amazing um, thing to have, you know, throughout your your learning life, if you want to put it like that. But uh, uh, that's absolutely brilliant for me, and that's one of the most positive things you can find in, in, in Royal Roads. The students really, and their networks, you know, is, is an, uh, an amazing thing. So, um, yeah, if, you know, people are out there listening in and they want to join Royal Roads, um, I, I, I don't think anyone would ever have a regret joining Royal Roads because it's a, it is a really transformative experience in many ways. Thanks so much, Ken. Oh, Rebecca. <laughs> totally just going to cut everybody off. Uh, I, I also wanted to mention that regardless of how you decide to finish your master's, whether it be a thesis, course-based, or internship, we all get the opportunity to study as a school at some point. So for example, I did the thesis track and I got to take a course with all the other students within the school. Uh, so that gives a, an extra opportunity to really 
do that transdisciplinary, interdisciplinary approach. Um, and my husband, I'll, I'll sidebar, my husband's a graduate of the DEM program. Uh, he and I get into some very interesting conversations. <laughs> Thanks. Oh man, that dinner conversation is probably thrilling. <laughs> Thanks for sharing that, Rebecca. Um, so Michael, we'll send the microphone over to you. Well, I can reiterate what other people have said, but I, I want to just say, if you're really thinking about joining us, um, not only do you have an excellent group of fellow students to learn from and from faculty and associate faculty, I, I would have to throw up a, uh, some praise for our student support services and the, um, the IT support groups that we work with, because we uh, just, just with COVID, we managed to switch our, um, our on-campus residencies to virtual in one week. And without a hitch, without a problem, and they, they, they went so well. And I was so relieved because I was at the other end of this thinking, what's gonna happen? Because we didn't really have any idea of what was going to happen. We didn't know about our capacity. I've heard other institutions having some real problems you know, with things like bandwidth or having the number of students online. You can't have the whole university online at the same time, that sort of thing. So it is a bigger picture as well. And I like to think holistically and I encourage that in, in, uh, in my students that I have in my classroom as well. And we, we take that really big picture of what we're talking about. It's a package that is really well put together, well thought out and well presented and I think the uptake has been awesome. And I think the fact that our, um, our programs are gaining in popularity is, is a testament to that kind of ability we have as an institution to do what we say we're going to do. Um, and it's, it's a challenge sometimes, but certainly that's a little bit of what makes life interesting. And uh, the, life, the life happens part is, happens to all of us. And so it's uh, a good thing that there are still humans in the back of this that can work with with people when, when it does happen. But overall, I would say that um, most of us are still thriving and that includes the students. So I'm, I'm quite relieved as a, as a human and a human, as a humanitarian. <laughs> so thanks. Thank you, Michael, for a human and a humanitarian. That's a perfect way to cap off our session today. So a big, big, big thank you to all of our current students, our alumni, our program heads, everyone who's joining us live and everyone who's watching the recording and all of the people who came together to put this webinar together in the background as well. For those of you who have questions about any of these specific programs or about railroads in general, our application process, our philosophy as an institution, I highly recommend you send us an email and you can find us at learn.more at rollroads.ca. And if you have questions about anything specific to um, international applications or things like that, you can connect with our international registration team at learn.more.international at rollroads.ca. And I'll be sure to include all that information in the follow-up email as well. So with that, we wish you all a wonderful rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, depending when and where you're watching this from. Bye-bye, everyone. <laughs>